in your host today, and we're going to be playing some more Nier Automata today. And how you all doing? Because I am doing quite well. Nice, comfy, and warm in blankets. After having a... Honestly, a pretty slow weekend, but it was fun. Did I forget to turn off my... Yes, I did. My uh, previews voice. <laughs> yeah, so I had a pretty slow weekend, all things because we didn't actually have Star Wars. Uh, our DM had to cancel because um, they didn't actually specify why. They said they didn't, ha they couldn't run a session at the time. So we just went, hope everything's okay, and left it at that. Uh, so I got a lot of time to catch up on my sleep. Honestly. <laughs> That's, that's what I mainly did. I um, may have spent too long playing Baldur's Gate off stream one day of the week, then realised it was 11am. Uh, yeah, um, for reference, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, at, the current, at its current state, refuses to be streamed properly after the tutorial. Like, the tutorial was manageable because it only crashed during like, very specific parts. Uh, the rest of the game is not like that. Uh, on my rig, I don't know why, uh, because everything it says to do online doesn't work. Um, so I've just not been streaming it, basically. So that game is not going to get streamed, so instead of that game being my uh, pause for a bit, so I can play... Um, what's it called? Amala again. Uh, I am pi I've got a different game, which I uh, own, which should be a reasonably short story. It is where it takes like a thousand parts, but it isn't a crazy long story from what I've seen of the game. I've I've watched a playthrough of the game a while back, and it didn't take crazy long, so. We'll be playing that. The game's called Man Eater, if anyone's heard of that game, and it's all about being a shark. Uh, so I thought that's a good one. It's got technically a story. It's a silly little shark chomping things game with narration. It it should be it should be a bit of a laugh. So that's gonna be our Thursday stream going forwards. Uh, apologies about not being able to stream Baldur's Gate three on more Thursdays, but if anyone watched last week's stream. Which is not going up YouTube, so you can only watch him now. Uh, you'll notice that there's like 10 streams. All about 20-ish minutes long. Uh, that's how long the game was taking to crash consistently. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 it has been very fun though. And when it is more stable, I recommend more people get it. Because it has been very enjoyable. Uh, however, as much as I enjoyed it so far, I can't recommend it because it is, yes, as I said, early access. Uh, but it's it's gonna be a little, a couple too many fatal errors for me to recommend it. But it is a really fun game. Okay, room. Also, yes, I did get Shadowheart to actually like me in the game. I have successfully gotten uh, their... Uh, how much they favour my character to uh, very high. A couple of the others are at least at high level as well. So, it's pretty cool. Because Shadowheart is the best. The more I'm playing the game, the more I'm liking that character. So uh, even when the full play, when the full game comes out and we have more character options, I still think she'll be in my party. Partially because you know she's a cleric, and the clerics are just useful. Uh, it's not the one of those classes that I think is absolutely mandatory in a party, but it's pretty damn close. Anyway, let's get into the game, and I can ramble on more about it then. Because we didn't have, um, what's it called? Yep, 
Yeah, because we didn't have uh, Star Wars, I'll probably be rambling a bit about Baldur's Gate uh, today. Uh, I will try to be as spoiler-free as possible, but some things I'm gonna have to spoil to make context, though. But I will do my best to limit it, or to make it as vague as possible. Because I've done that game is very enjoyable. Uh, you can also very much tell that game is in early access. Because I've been doing lots of interesting... Basically, I've been playing like the Divinity games. Well, I know there's lots of ways around. Challenges. And because there's a lot of ways around challenges, I've been trying to use creative ways to get around them. Unfortunately... Some of my ways are a little too creative, and the programmers haven't yet um, implemented them into the game. For instance, there was one part where there is a big pit with a big metal grate that has giant spikes in it, right? Um, which seems quite reasonable, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> the bit, however, is it expects you to walk up to, uh, behind where there's a couple of goblins guarding it, and in the process of that, I missed something. There it is. There you go. The hell? Is that Intel? Yep. Oh, all well, the information. Uh. Put rank name notifier my MSP station, please. Constable Kenshi Sato. Ishitoyoshi Sato is seen this by 30 km an hour to 35 km an hour. <laughs> ah, this is, a par this is a kid. This is a kid who was speeding in his uh, parents' car. Jarbound lizard must be captured. Long ago, the aged man threw out his back after gazing upon the lizard in a jar. His young wife departed to call the doctor, only to vanish and return. His surrounding villages spread rumors how she had fled, but the man paid the no heed. The lizard must be captured. Hmm. As Project Guest Salt undergoes approval in. Countries across the world and recognize that there have been imperfections, how information has been regulated with regard to civilians. Until the safety file system can be verified, all information related to this member matter is subject level 4 classification. As such, in re relation to the Ministry of Health and Welfare, life rehabilitation program must be kept strictly confidential. Furthermore, we ask that the following information be sent to all related personnel and organizations immediately. Clause regarding compensation the event and information leaks are to be added to. Contacts with all partner companies. In the event the information leak ascertaining the source should be the company's top priority. Right? Care to mention C a bit of information how to handle leaked information as well as the individuals who disclosed it. Yikes! Scary stuff. Yes, where I say. Um. Yeah, it uh, turns out some of my. Uh, there, there was a big part where it expects you to go down and activate a lever that's hiding behind two goblins, right? Uh, the goblins are not hostile at this point, uh, if you did it like I did, but... Because I essentially talked my way in. So they're not hostile at this point. But... They're not exactly going to let me just open the lever to their giant spider pit 
into the area where their main, like, magic user is. I mean, they're high priestesses there, so... It's not exactly the part that you'd go, oh yeah, this is obvious. Uh, this is what is should happen. No. It, um... So what I did... I crept up to a hidden location and repeatedly cast um, an ice spell at the metal gate, which made it, which basically broke it. Uh, unfortunately, the spiders were too. Nobody reacted, including the spiders. I went down and talked to the spiders, and they said, "Oh yes, if you open the gate, we'll help you out." <coughs> um, with a convince check. Also, it turns giant. It turns out giant spiders are Scottish in this game. Who knew? Got in, bullshit. I had to speak with animals, so I actually got to understand them. Who looks like playing as a ranger? Uh, I did restart the campaign. I essentially went. Um, I want to try. I want to try out a couple of new things. Like I wanted a slightly different stat array in it, so I um, I did restart and end up playing a half-elf instead. It was essentially no downside, like in stats, so... Thought may as well. It meant that uh, my dump stat uh, on the character was intelligence instead of uh, intelligence and charisma. So I had more points to spend elsewhere. I also managed to beat a, um, quite a challenging boss, I'm going to assume. I think they were a cleric. Like, a, a much higher level cleric, because the max level in the game for players at the moment is level 4. This was the only level 5 enemy I've currently encountered. Uh, I think it was a cleric, and, um, we essentially, um, cheesed it. Because what happened, um, I fired an arrow. I, I saw the boss was up uh, top, so I fired an arrow at it. It was a thunder arrow. These, th these thunder arrows have like a little um, AoE shockwave and knockback. When you use them, they're standing near a cliff. Um, so uh, it'll either like knock them off the cliff, or it'll knock the enemies to the side, or something like that. It'll, it'll put them into a position where they're not capable of uh, consistently buffing. <laughs> They're allies. That was the main. That was the main goal. Of it was to like spread them out so the allies wouldn't um, be quite as close to the boss. Maybe knock some people prone, that kind of thing. Maybe take a couple of the uh, minions off the ledge. Uh, fired the arrow, missed the arrow. It landed right next to uh, the boss, and the thunder waves uh, knockback went off. And um, the only enemy they ended up getting knocked back was the boss, but the boss got knocked uh, off the cliff and into the pit and died instantly. So it was a very much a uh, task failed successfully moment. Which was quite entertaining to see at the time. Um, I also had some comedy timing crashes. Like, I just did something really major, hadn't saved, I was about to save, and then it crashed. Uh, that happened a lot.
It is a very enjoyable little game. Um, there's a lot of stuff to do in it as well, even with just the early access. I guess it is the first area. And if the Divinity games are anything to go by, the first and second areas are like the largest areas. So... It makes sense. Because it's going to have a smaller area, but it's going to have a lot more story in the later game sections. But the areas themselves are going to be a lot smaller. Proposal. Use pulp fire to force him to stop. Emmett, can you shut up? Sorry to start the round over roll the guest. Name is ML is my shop where I buy something. I don't know what ML sells. Oh yeah, they sells they sell high level ones, but nothing good. idea that there are hacking upgrades in this game. I don't think I asked for that. Well, they're deep, deep, deep underground. Pick something deep and go deeper. Feel free to visit me and tell me what. Okay. Very sleepy. I have caught up in my sleep a lot more, but I am still sleepy. Had, uh, we did have a uh, Ravnica game. We just didn't have Star Wars this weekend. That was the only uh, role playing game we ended up missing. Uh, Ravnica was very fun. It was a little like quiet session. It was kind of a um, finish up the storyline we'd just been pursuing. 
cannon session. Now we've been doing all this stuff with um, one of the goblin crime bosses, uh, minion underlings, and like we captured the underling, and it was just like a cool down after that. So ended up doing a lot of the uh, downtime activities. So what we ended up doing was. Uh, The Orzov and the Golgari characters basically were setting up a communications network where um, people can actually get access to the Orzov when they're at work. Because they're like a um, undersea... I don't know what the name to call them. Basically they just find possibly useful garbage in that's been left in the undercity and like recycle it. A reclaimer, that was a, that was a job title. They basically sell stuff to like that people have thrown away to like brokers and things, so they've got just stuff. Uh, that's what their characters were doing. Uh, my character, uh, I asked my downtime thing for a gruel riot to be going on in like the area, and. So my character ended up being on a gruel riot, um, and because they hadn't written up their downtime, and my character basically abducted the Izzet mage, or the Izzet um, artificer in our party, and brought them along, like physically dragged them along to it. Ah, uh, it was really funny. Because basically we all... We had the point... <laughs> that, um... We, ba we basically, I... Like, their characters have been... It's gone on quite well with my character, so my character's basically tried to induct them into the gruel. Because they like to blow shit up. And they could be very handy to have around. So we, I basically just abducted them for a riot. And they're just casual musings because they're a very intelligent character. But they have basically no knowledge of you probably should keep quiet about this kind of stuff. They were just musing ideas around during the Gulp Girl riots like, oh, where should we go and riot? Uh, but I want to point out once again, this is in the this is a role-playing game. This is not real. You know, it sounds very on the nose right now, but it's not real. So we went in to uh, break up, open a crisis like cage from the Simic, and just have fun. <laughs> Basically, uh, the gruel riot essentially was very enjoyable, and we we unleashed a crisis. I had a laugh, so then I had a big after party in game. We'll preference again, in game. Uh, and we had a grand old time. We all, both characters got very drunk. Uh, my character less so. So I was actually able to pick where I woke up. Now, the Izzet didn't drink enough for his character to like wake up anywhere particularly bad. Uh, they woke up in just a big heap of gruel people. Uh, my character, I got to pick, so my character naturally woke up in bed with four, um, in, in, in a tent with four girl ladies. <laughs> because I got to pick, and it's like, what would my character be doing in this? Probably that.
That character's quite popular. Because he's big. <laughs> and he's high up in the group to get some followers, essentially. Uh, as it as it was described by the DM, um, yeah, your Anarchs don't follow you because of any actual leadership things. They just want to kind of be like senpai, <laughs> and I am senpai, which was quite a thing to hear. It was senpai Gron. And you basically abduct, uh, brought the Izzet along, and uh, the the Anarchs were told not to let them die, essentially. Like, have fun, but keep keep an eye on the little squishy one. Because I have no... I have, Grodd has no uh, belief in their survival instincts. So, we look after them because they're very useful. And they can blow shit up. And we'll eventually get them to join the Gruul as someone useful. Uh, so, they're being slowly inducted into the Gruul. <laughs> uh, which is going great so far. <laughs> almost end up attacking the Selesnia as well, and our next uh, mission is actually to help diplomatic relations between the, Sim the Selesnia and the Gruul, which is why I specifically didn't vote <coughs> for us to go and smash up a Selesnia place. <coughs> it was also great because halfway through the session, we didn't have uh, all our players for a good chunk of it. Uh, but one of our players did end up joining. The missing player ended up basically getting um, being free a lot earlier than they expected, so we end up having um, the full party back. And the other player is a Simic. And basically, they're a Simic crisis researcher. So what ended up happening uh, was we went and um, smashed up one of the labs and the Simic were taking notes. They were like vainly trying to stop us in the case of put on a show, make it look like we're not letting them do this. Because obviously it's very illegal in Ravnica to unleash a crisis on the city. But if the Grawl do it, then they didn't do it. So they are allowed to just take notes of the combat data. Uh, and they did end up making, uh, yeah. having a lot. Uh, so the uh, the other character also ended up uh, being at the riot. Oh, it was such a blast. I love little roleplay bits like that. It was my character like shouting to the Grawl. Like making us have fun. I knew that it was a very narrative fluffy bit. And the, so the GM was basically giving me what, pretty much free reign on a lot of the stuff for it. Because it wasn't a proper combat encounter, it was literally like, we're fully role-playing this. Ne nothing's gonna ba bad is gonna happen to either of our characters, provided we don't do anything like actively stupid. Was what I was very aware of, so... Uh, I just fluffed it up, hammed it up a bit, like... Oh yeah, we do, uh, we do this thing, and... Uh, and, and uh, our Izzet character ended up being really useful in it as well because, well, the Gruul were doing our classic Gruul thing and trying to smash up, or, like, smash open the door and things like that. Uh, they were very intelligent, so they just got at the hinges with a crowbar, basically, and uh, 
ended up like breaking the hinge so that we could lift it off easier. And the crisis just charged out. Uh, it was a great bit of fun. And very silly. Like, it was extremely silly. But it was awesome. And for the record, by the way, I am not taking recent events um, at all lightly. Um, it is a fucking atrocity that happened last week. Uh, I didn't get much chance to talk about it, but yeah, I really, I, it just brought it up my mind because we were doing that role play session and I just talked about it. But yeah, I don't at all adone what happened. It was fucking awful. And I'm hoping if you if you know what day it is today, uh, you'll know what I'm referring to. It is currently the 11th of January, 2021. Um, so uh, last week, you 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 <coughs> if you remember last week, you know what happened. <laughs> and I think it is fucking atrocious. And I hope everyone involved gets horribly arrested. And possibly sent to life imprisonment. Every single one. But yeah, now to happier topics again. Uh, oh, what else has happened? <coughs> yeah, that's mostly what happened. I ended up watching quite a bit of anime. Oh, I'm playing a lot of Genshin. I did play quite a bit of Genshin. Um, I found a challenge I can't currently do, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. I think it, we think it scaled for more than two people. It's one of the corp challenges um, for the new event. Yeah, I am going to comment that I really don't like them if they come if it comes up with a uh, recommendation. Because normally Genshin on every update is it asks about what did you do during this thing, yeah. uh, and I think the current events um, not really that good. I love parts of it. <coughs> like parts of the current event are absolutely amazing. I fucking hate the cop challenge because I love doing everything in the game, all the challenges. I love trying to do them solo, but. One of these challenges that I that is um, basically today's challenge can't be soloed. I can't figure out how to solo it. Unless the game was to be a much lower level world. And the problem with my world level at the moment is that I'm very high level. So no one tries to join the world because they can't physically get in. There is a very limited number of players that are able to actually get into my world in the first place. So I have to call on friends. And none of my friends are high enough level to join my world. What Literally one of my friends is. And we tried the challenge and it can't be two mana. Or at least what, with what we have we can't two mana. So uh, I'm going to comment that basically. The corp challenge is be physically impossible without two manning uh, is not a good thing at all. Uh, the first one was fine. The first cop challenge was basically like shoot a bunch of barrels. Uh, it was a lot of barrels and it was quite time quick on time constraints but it was like doable if you were good and I did do it. On my second attempt too, I'm very proud. You had like 15 seconds to shoot down eight barrels in like pretty hard to reach locations so it was like it was challenging but not impossible which is what I didn't mind about it 
today's challenge, it, we had like 25 seconds to kill three Abyss Mages, two water and one ice. Uh, which is pretty much strictly impossible. Um, we didn't even come close. We came vaguely close with two of us. Like, we still had one Abyss Mage left at the end of it. They're almost full health. That's why we just went, we don't think we can do this. And no one is powerful enough in my world to join. <coughs> so, yeah, it's not it's not going to happen. Which really sucks, uh, because I enjoy the game. This was a mistake. Now that, that particular part is one of the few bits that I've said is a big mistake. Because it didn't feel good. Like the, uh, the Cryo Reg is fine <laughs> super boss from the event. It wasn't a good choice, I don't think. But that one wasn't as bad at all. There I, sure I've... are a lot of hostile enemies here. Why are some machines so aggressive while others couldn't care less about us? Maybe it's environmental. Like, it's this particular spot there's a lot of aggressive machines. <laughs> so maybe there's an environmental factor of some kind. Hello, ninja. Hmm. Hey, all my current quests. Oh yeah, we gotta go to Pascal. Actually, let's go to the fast travel. We should be close to a fast travel point. Yeah, we are. Huh. Yeah, I'm gonna do a lot of playthroughs. I think of Baldur's Gate 3, if I end up enjoying the story um, as much as I think I will, because it's, it's one of the things about D&D, um, &D, which I like. There are so many versatile, there are so many classes I can play and so many options. Even more than Divinity, like, I love the Divinity 1 and 2 games, don't get me wrong. But um, 5e... Particularly, I've had a lot of things that I've always enjoyed in 5e. Uh, so my main playthrough will, uh, my first and main playthrough will obviously it'll be on stream when the game is actually out, uh, and it will be my, if it is all added like it should be, it will be my dragonborn, probably barbarian, maybe fighter. Or Ranger or something. But it'll probably be Dragonborn Barbarian. Which will be enjoyable to play. Uh, Pascal's Village. <coughs> Yeah, the main, the main one I'll be playing will be on stream as my Barbarian. There will be others as well, though, that I'll be playing um, when I've finished it. I want my first opinion of the game in full release to go, like, unchanged. So I will be doing... When I'm playing the campaign on stream, uh, I won't be playing you know, my own personal one out, outside of it. But after I'm done with that, uh, I will totally playing me again, probably. Unless I really don't end up enjoying the story, but I doubt that.
video. Ah! Oh no! Sorry, something wrong. Hey, Mercy, please let us go. No. What? We just wanted to find a place to live. Okay, so we do get to do this. You gotta stay here, you gotta find you eventually. You have a choice. Oops, you damage. Help! Cool, I actually get to do this quest this time. I should be able to get enough cash to do it. So. Near factory. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward for them to finish off the game. I'm curious if multi-classing will be a thing. I assume it will be. Uh, I also love what how they've changed the game. The little changes to simplify the game to make it work better for PC are really good changes, I honestly think. That wasn't the one I wanted. There we go, that's the one. Yeah, it's it's been really enjoyable to play it so far. I'm enjoying playing the uh, basically the the heavy ranger, you could nickname it. But it's basically it's a close the close quarters ranger has always been one of my absolute favourite things to play in D&D. Because I essentially play the ranger as a more druidy focused paladin. And it works ridiculously well. People always just think of rangers as the ranged class. Like the archer. No. They can hold their own in close quarters probably better than most of the classes you'd think of as close quarters classes. When using updated ranger rules, they perform about as well as fighters, paladins, barbarians, all the other big, all of the biggins. Uh, for their role. Possibly more so in certain cases. Like, they tend to do more damage than them. I'm super happy it does still work. There we go. I'm happy they, they're doing it like that because it makes sense. That yes, the ranger is good at close quarters, which is how I like to play rangers. And it does. It actively goes, yeah, you can do that. You can have every character play exactly the way you want. Like, I personally think the best archers in the game um, are rangers. Rangers are great archers. But the thing is about rangers, they can do close quarters and archery equally as well. I personally think that for uh, if you want a really good archer... You pick a rogue. Um, annoyingly, I don't think they'll ever put in the best rogue archer class. The uh, the scout. It wasn't in the base book. And they've said they're putting in all the ones from the PHB. I doubt they're going to put in the Xanathar's classes. Which is where the rogue is. The, archer, the scout rogue is from. But I think Scout is a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic rogue. Uh, and is, I, in my opinion, one of the best archers in the entire game. The competitors are naturally rangers, because like, rangers do very good jobs, archers, I won't lie. Um, even though I prefer Scout as an archer class, um, the ranger does hold its own against it. There's Arcane Archer Fighter. 
Uh, basically because Fighter is really good. You get the spec the couple of special arrows do definitely hold their own. Uh, and Samurai. Samurai Archer is very strong. I've really wanted to make a, uh, I also hope, I don't, I'm not guaranteeing they'll do this. I really hope they put in, if they put in anything from Xanathar's Guide, I'm hoping they put in the racial feats. Because how much the race actually matters in the game, because it does. That's why I'm looking forward to playing Dragonborn, because oh, Dragonborn are known to not be quite as evil. Even though I'll be playing a chromatic Dragonborn, because I'll probably have the metallic chromatic split. Um, with the, this is what you're primarily are. Because that's a big roleplay thing in D&D, is supposed to be the chromatic metallic split. Uh, what's my quest now? I need to remember where they are. don't remember. Oh, this is the fair. <laughs> to be honest, though, we can actually do the quest in the fair while we're here, so. Excuse me, I've been sneezing a lot. <laughs> Don't know why. But yeah, uh, it's been. <laughs> I am looking forward to doing more characters. <laughs> in Baldur's Gate. I'm also looking forward to find out more about the characters in the game. This place looks familiar. Oh, right. It's from that woman's photograph. I'll be sure to get her the coordinates. Okay. Amusement park unlocked. Classically liked in 5e specifically. I do enjoy Paladin. Mainly because they took out one of the main restrictions of Paladin from the previous editions that I hated. Which was um, you have to play Lawful Good. 
I fucking hated that about Paladins, because I don't like playing lawful good. I don't, I don't like being pigeonholed into an allegiant. Uh, one of the, the um, excuse me. I never like being pigeonholed by into certain roles in the game, but particularly not lawful good. I hate lawful good. I tend not to like lawful good characters in games. There's definitely some exceptions. It's not my least favorite. It's to be honest, it's it's one of my least favorite um, roles, like um, alignments in games is lawful good. I don't like lawful good characters. Um, if I have if I play good characters, which I do tend to, I don't. Know, it feels like my nose is bleeding. It's not. In fact, actually, give me a second, I will get a tissue. Uh, where's, I've got some tissues around here somewhere. I'll, I will blow my nose off of camera so you guys don't have to see or hear this. Feels a little better. I don't. I do hope that I didn't get picked up on the mic. <laughs> I try my best to shield the mic from it as much as possible, but um. But yes, I, I don't like playing lawful good characters. I never have enjoyed it. Um, I'm not a particular fan of lawful in general. To be honest, I don't. I don't tend to play lawful characters very well. So I tend to avoid them. I can play them like... This is a code I follow. <laughs> kind of characters which I have done before. But usually my characters end up being chaotic or neutral. My favourite alignment alignments to play are... Um, neutral good and chaotic good. Those are the ones, uh, according to Pathfinder Kingmaker, um, my alignment is neutral good, because most of the uh, neutral good actions were actions that I agreed with. Not all cases. Yeah, but it was in quite a few cases. Uh, the neutral good option was the option that I would pick in real life. Which I found quite interesting, because I've always had myself, uh, I thought of myself as chaotic good in terms of, like, which I, if I had to pick an alignment which for me, which one would I be? You know that all kind of quiz kind of thing? Uh, I've usually gotten chaotic good. But I'm going to the point of Kingmaker, I get neutral good. Which is to say I'm just apparently kind of nice and not a dick, essentially. I also do enjoy playing um, evil. I enjoy playing chaotic evil, and chaotic evil is the only evil that I can safe to say I can convincingly play a bit. Because it's evil for the sake of I felt like it at the time. Um, because I have found... But Chaotic Evil, you have to be in the right kind of party for it to work. Um... Because I was playing a Chaotic Evil character in one campaign, which I was going, okay, I'm going to play properly evil. I'm playing a Conqueror, I'm playing a Fallen Asthma Conqueror Paladin. So, and I'm going to play them as evil, because I think I can play this character as evil. This is a character I kind of understand their evilness. Because they were supposed to be, like, nuts, essentially. 
But a different party member was so evil. They were apparently neutral. They weren't. Um, I think I've told this story before. This character was neutral, but they were so insanely evil that I couldn't play my character as evil because I had to play as a balancing factor to this not case in the party. Um, because there's two kinds, there's a few ways to play evil. Um, not many people do it properly. Uh, I have the knowledge to play evil. I end up not being great at evil. Not because um, I play it as the first, this, the main way, but the normal way, the obvious way of playing evil. Which is why people don't allow evil characters in campaigns a lot. Uh, because I am too nice. I, I don't like being like actively evil in a lot of games. There's ways of being evil that I enjoy, and there's ways I hate being evil. Because I play evil... Because the way I've always done evil is I play evil as intelligent evil. Uh, in such a way of... Uh, I am doing this... I am giving you a good benefit so that you then think of me as a good benefactor, in which case you are more likely to do the shit I tell you. Shut the fuck up, Emil! Yeah, that's, that's how I play evil characters. They are evil, they do good deeds for evil purposes, essentially. Like, if you think of me as the hero of the kingdom, then it's going to be real easy for me to get my way. That's the way I've always enjoyed playing evil. Like, people owe me favors. Um, because, oh, I saved their kid. Emil. Alright, you little shit. Fuck off. Where are you? Yeah, and that's how I like to play evil characters. I play them as intelligent evil. They're not just going to do random evil deeds for the sake of it. Um, even chaotic evil characters. No, they are. They don't have to be dumb rage machines. I'm gonna shoot you, you little fucker. why evil characters are usually banned is because there is a difference between uh, evil and stupid. Because so many evil characters will do the sake of evil for the evil's sake and they will just ruin a campaign. Because people don't know how to play evil. So I need the right kind of campaign to play evil. Because I will play an evil character who does very good deeds a lot of the time because he's doing it for his own nefarious purposes. Because I've never seen the point of playing evil as dumb. Or at least dumb as in doesn't have like, this is why I am evil.
Let me just give me a headache. why evil characters are so, like, hard to do. I know people who can play evil characters really well. You know, and I am perfectly fine letting them play evil characters. There are characters that I won't let play... There are people I probably wouldn't let play neutral characters because of how evil they are. So, they're great people. Like, full, full credit to the person. They are awesome, and they make very interesting characters. But they are not good at playing bad guys, and they play good guys as bad guys. They have to temper it with be having to be a good guy. <laughs> Which ends up them being neutral. Basically, I've I, I found that characters that I play can end up being, uh, regardless of alignment, can end up being at least a bit good. They're a bit of a, a nice person, usually. Or at least a good aligned person, more often than not. Just by happenstance, because I have, I have a hard time playing people as evil, because I always, I always like characters who are... Now just sit there. Oof. And there are other people who I have found quite often their characters, no matter how good they are, end up being slightly evil. It's, a, it's human nature, right? And it's the nature of role-playing games. Is you always will like give a bit of a flair of your own to the character. Not sure if that means that the, the people I know are quite evil. But... Yeah. The, my my favourite archetype of character to play is a character who uses evil powers for the sake of good. That's always been my favourite in games. Yes, I tend to play edgy characters, what of it? I don't play them as edgy, but I end up playing the edgy characters. So, um... It's always the way I've liked it, because for me, the characters of evildoers in a lot of games and... Now, the, the villain's power set in a lot of things are just so cool. Um, which, which is the ones come to mind? Like Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom, all the things he can do is just badass. He's a meg. He's a mega genius. He's got all the weird magic and science powers combined together with really powerful physic physical abilities because he augments them with his equipment and stuff. It's like, he's a really cool character. Um, Doomsday from DC. Literal walking dreadnought of a creature. Recovers from pretty much any injury. <laughs> adapts himself in so many ways. Uh, Venom. I know Venom's an anti hero, but I think his power is really cool. <laughs> And when I was growing up, all the bad guys had the coolest powers. Not so much nowadays, the people have realised that if you give the heroes that kind of cool powers as well, um, that it's great. But you've always got to give the villain something interesting. 
So I always liked the villain abilities a lot more by like playing good guys. So when it, you, you, I get the option to have a good guy, a, a good character that uses evil abilities. And, and abil a r basically really powerful abilities that usually have some huge dreadful downside. That's the kind of character I love playing, like um, the Dark Knights in Final Fantasy, Death Knights in WoW, Demon Hunters, um, Conqueror Paladins for that matter in a way. Um, just like using, using the power that isn't necessarily good aligned. But using it for good with a good character, I find that so fun and so interesting. It's always been my favorite way to play games. Because, let's face it, it's just so goddamn cool. this way. Like, if we don't go too far... As long as I don't go all the way over there, it should be fine. At least not until we're finished. Why this must we read all these books, brother? Leave. Knowledge expands horizons and enriches existence. But can't we just transfer all this data over <clears throat> instantly? Into your head, perhaps, but not to your heart. <sighs> I guess. <laughs> hmm. Hey, so... Yes? My name? Eve? This book says it's a woman's name. Shouldn't we be called Cain and Abel or something instead? Humans wouldn't change names so easily. Besides, you should be proud of the name Eve. Huh. Well, if that's what you think, then I'm fine with it. Glad to hear it. <laughs> I love that Eve is like... Um... Is there something else? After we're done reading, can we go out and play? I'm sure it'll be tons of fun. All right, but only after we're finished. You mean it? Then I'm gonna try extra hard to finish this. Extra, extra hard. You do that. I do like this explaining why Eve reacted so poorly. Uh, even it, it reacted in the way you did because Eve's got a very kid-like persona. Is what I'm gauging so far, which means when that explains why Eve went a bit, you know, nuts. There's another of those machines. I suppose it's going to attack me, right? This machine type purposely seeks out androids in order to enact revenge. It should be dispatched immediately. Got it. So I have to do the uh, wandering couple before this point. Okay. Oh, fair enough. Well, that's fair, I guess. Oh, 
just don't kill the gold machines. My family, my brethren, all have been killed. If I cannot avenge them, then I have no right to live. Now, we fight! Got him. These ones are super difficult, so I even try. Ah. Machines wanting to avenge their families? That's absurd. Data shows that humans often engaged in similar activities throughout mankind's history. Such attempts at revenge were often seen as justified. And yet... I... Unit data is just... Uh, what was it? Enhanced machines? Small biped? No. No, these are the other ones. Gun? Oh, the big uh, robot. Peculiar? Oh, these are the ones. 
Courageous brother, small golden stub is covered by followers in the same colour, except glory to machine life forms as they attack. Hateful sister, small golden stub that covered by followers of the same colour, often as effort to avenge its older brother. Small golden stub that was covered by followers of the same colour, thought to avenge its tribe. Which made it in the hand of androids, even be enemy defeated and engage in self destruct while cursing the name of androids. Gold tank. Gold glide biped. Blood drenched machine. Jackson Blood Film resent over the destruction of his as the hands of resistance and seeks to avenge his. Oh, I remember him! Zombie Clown. Serves his body and loads victims of his play before speaking. Oh, no liquid from its mouth, toxic enough to melt the skin of androids. One defeat off of the axe flame of it. Gravekeeper. Yeah. So I've encountered about half of the enemies in the game. That's kind of horrifying. The bedrock here was bombed out in the last war. Looks like the whole city is starting to sink as a result. I should really not have picked this game for my Monday, honestly. Cause I can't think properly on Monday. It's Monday. I just had the weekend. I'm not supposed to use my brain on the on the Monday. This is supposed to be the big turning point. He's doing that mission, uh, which I will do next week. Uh, is the big turning point where uh, you? Because after this this mission, this is where two B and nine S um, split. If memory serves during two B story, so this is entirely new territory. After that. So I'll do that next week when I have more things to think about. Fast travel. Anything else to talk about? I don't really. I can't really think of anything. Ah. Yeah, my stomach's hurting me. Okay, so I'm. This actually doesn't seem a terrible time to stop because then. Because my thought is, if I stop here, a little bit earlier than uh, I would prefer. But if I stop here, then I get to. Next week, do a ton. Because I don't have enough... T the thing is, the thing I want to do is to do the missile silo. 
But I don't have enough time to do it. And I will get really interested in the story after that, I think. So if we do that next week, then there'll be a much bigger, more interesting part. That's my thought. So th this was kind of a chill part. Uh, I'm kind of hungry. And I've, I've really have run out of topics. But this weekend was a slow one. Normally I talk about my weekends and monthly streams. But um, I didn't really do a lot this weekend. I watched some anime. I played one D&D &D game out of the two games I'm normally in. And mostly just kind of slipped in and watched vid YouTube videos. I didn't really do a lot. So, yeah. Uh, I'll do next. I'll, I'll continue on next week uh, with Nia. And it should be a lot of fun. Uh, tomorrow I'll have... I don't know what I'm playing tomorrow, actually. I'll, I'll find something, I'm sure. Uh, not sure what I'll be playing tomorrow, but... Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Have a fantastic evening. Every single one of you keep playing the games, keep being awesome. You guys are the best on Twitch. Yeah, I'll be back on tomorrow with something. I generally don't know what yet. I will probably figure it out tomorrow. Uh, but as for now... Thank you for watching. Uh, throw me a follow, subscribe, the whole jazz if you can. It'd be greatly appreciated. This is both on YouTube and face uh, Facebook. Eh. Don't follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Um, if you've tried to add me as a friend on Facebook, I will probably block you if I don't actually know you. Um, and, yeah, follow me on Twitter and sub to my Twitch, if you can, it'd be greatly appreciated so I can, you know, keep on eating food and staying alive and streaming for you guys. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Have a fantastic evening, everyone. Keep playing the games, keep being awesome. You guys are the best friends on Twitch. See you guys around. Have a fantastic time. Good night. Peace.